Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting system of equations. Well, I call this interesting because we have 2 to the power x plus x equals 2 to the power y plus y. So we kind of have like an exponential piece and a polynomial. And then we, the other equation is just linear. x plus y is equal to 16. Obviously, this is kind of like a non-standard type of equation. And a lot of times with systems of equations, you know, we do substitution. We do elimination if possible, or sometimes we just add the equations together or multiply them together, so on and so forth. So we do all these different manipulations to arrive at the answer. So we have two unknowns and two variables, I mean two unknowns and two equations, so we should be able to solve this. Uh, and let's just start uh, with something that wouldn't work. Okay, why do I show you that? Because sometimes you need to see methods that don't work. So. Let's go ahead and isolate y from the second equation. And we get y equals 16 minus x. Let's go ahead and replace the y with that in the first equation. That gives us 2 to the power x plus x equals 2 to the power 16 minus x plus 16 minus x. Now, it would definitely be nice if x is canceled out and we ended up with an exponential equation. But unfortunately, that's not the case. So what can I do with this? I can put everything on the same side. I can put the, you know, 2x minus 16 on the left-hand side and then put the exponentials on the right-hand side, so on and so forth. But no matter what you do, I don't really see an easy way out. Like, in, you know, instead of guessing the, the answer. That, that's, not, that's not the goal. And, you know, this is probably not going to work. If you find a way that makes this work, please let me know because I'd be curious but I don't think it's gonna work nicely. So we're gonna use a different approach and here's what we're gonna do. We're going to focus on the first equation first because that's more complicated. And we have the same type of structure on both sides. So we have two to the power something plus something and then on the right hand side, the same thing, right? Pretty much. The variables are different. So I can think of it in terms of functions. How about defining f as f of t. And I, I'll i try to avoid using x and y here. I think I've done it in one of the videos. I used x and y in the same functional equation and I use y equals f of x. That, that was incorrect. So that's kind of confusing. I totally understand. So I want to use f of t and I want to define it as 2 to the power t plus t. So it's a function of t and obviously 2 to the power x plus x is just going to be f of x. That makes sense, right? All right, so based on our definition, it's going to be f of x. And 2 to the power y plus y is just going to be f of y. Now, don't think of these as functions, like in general, but uh, specific points, like fixed points. So kind of like an x0, x sub 0, or something like that. Okay, so we have two points, you know, x comma f of x and y comma f of y. And we notice that these two values are the same. So we have the situation where f of y equals f of x. So what, right? What does this imply? Well, if we know something, like if you know more about f, then this will mean something. For example, if is f injective, right? If f is injective, that means, or one to one, that means f of y equals f of x implies y equals x and that would be super duper helpful but how can i find out so that's my goal uh, to show whether um, you know f is injective or not so here's what we're going to do since we have this function f of t it was defined as a function of t let's go ahead and differentiate it right so what happens if i differentiate f of t with respect to t i get 2 to the power ln 2 plus 1. Obviously, 2 to the power 2 for real values of t is not going to be negative, and ln 2, since 2 is greater than 1, this is also going to be positive. So, and adding 1 is just going to keep that. So, we have the situation where f prime, that's not f by the way, uh, f prime of t is greater than 0 for all values of t. Okay, great. So, we have the derivative which is positive. What is that supposed to mean? As you know, with functions, it means that f is increasing. But since this is true for all values of all, all values of t, f is always increasing. 
Great. And later on, I'm going to show you what the graph of f looks like. And then from there, you can tell basically, uh, you know, uh, that f is always increasing. Now, now, if f is always increasing, remember, we've done equations like this before. And we noticed that if a function is increasing, it can only be intersected once by a horizontal line or by something that is decreasing. For, so for example, if you have a function that is like increasing all the time and another function is always decreasing, obviously they're going to intersect at one point and they have to intersect, right? Okay. Um, so do they have to intersect? Maybe at infinity, who knows? But they will intersect eventually. What happens if you have an increasing function and a constant, which is a horizontal line, again, the same situation applies. We have a single intersection point. So now we can safely say that since f is always increasing, it is going to be, it is going to be injective or one to one. And since f is injective, f of y equals f of x is just going to imply y equals x. Awesome. So from a given, like a complicated equation like 2 to the power y plus y equals 2 to the power x plus x, we got something much, much simpler, which is y equals x. So that's really cool because now our system turns into the following. Remember, we were given this one, right? 2 to the power x plus x equals 2 to the power y plus y and x plus y equals 16. Now we're going to replace the first equation with x equals y or y equals x. And the second equation is just x plus y is equal to 16. Now we have a much simpler system and how do you solve it? Easy, right? Just replace y with x or x with y and then you're going to get the answer. So if you replace y with x, this is substitution by the way, x plus x becomes 16 which means 2x is equal to 16 and then from here you get x equals 8. Awesome. And since x and y are equal, this implies y equals 8. So the solution is going to be 8 comma 8 if you want to write it as an ordered pair. Okay, great. So uh, could we use this, um, you know, could we use elimination? Well, pretty much elimination and substitution are very similar here, but that's the whole idea. So we proved that F is injective by looking at the derivative. And now let's go ahead and look at it from another angle. So F of T equals 2 to the power t plus t. So what kind of function are we talking about? We said it's not exponential, it's not polynomial, it's kind of a combo. So if you look at the expression and let's say t is approaching infinity, if you look at, so I don't want to really take a limit here, but more like uh, explore what happens if t is approaching positive infinity. Okay, if t approaches infinity, Obviously, 2 to the power t is going to grow much, much faster than t, right? It is going to grow much faster. So t is going to be insignificant, like super duper small, like compare 2 to the power 100 and 100. You're going to know what I'm talking about, right? They're very different. So this, this e, t will be like an insignificant, like super duper small compared to 2 to the power t. So our function is going to act like 2 to the power t, which is exponential. And if t approaches negative infinity, then 2 to the power uh, t, like if you think about it, I, I think we can look at the limit here, that makes more sense, and it's going to be 0. Why? Because we can write it as 1 over 2 to the power negative t, and as, approaches t, uh, as t approaches negative infinity, this is going to approach positive infinity, and the denominator is going to approach infinity, so 1 over infinity is just going to approach 0. Great. So our function then, the exponential term is going to be like super duper unimportant and then we're going to end up with something that is polynomial. So our function is going to behave like an exponential function for the very large values, for very large positive values of t and for very small uh, negative to small uh, values, uh, it's going to behave like, um, you know, f of t equals t, which is the diagonal, right? Okay, great. So I think it's a good time to take a look at the graph of this and which obviously uh, will make more sense. And again, like I said earlier, for positive values, you can pretty much say that if t is greater than zero, you can see here because this is the t axis, right? Uh, if t is positive, then our function behaves like an exponential and for negative t values, for t is less than zero, it is just going to behave like uh, you know, uh, f of t equals t, which is kind of like the, if you want to use another variable, like you could say, I guess, z equals t, 
because I don't want to use y and x in this case. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.